Good morning, friends. It's a bright, sunny August day here in Portland. So I have actually put a big uh, piece of cardboard in front of the window to my right just to keep my face from getting completely washed out. And there's already curtains on that window. I'm on a second floor here. So what I'm going to do is give you an, a, a quick where do you want to start with this curriculum, the School of Tomorrow, using the Calculator of Tomorrow. I should explain that the Calculator of Tomorrow just means some computing surface like Codesters, which we've been looking at. I'm not sure if I'm going to use any Codesters here because I want to show you a Python generator which is a common construct in the Python language, but the Codesters emulator, I believe, does not yet implement the yield statement. We'll do a test of that. That's what we'll do. But we won't do that first. I'm just getting this queued up. We've been here recently in the videos. We've also been to Nepal recently, which is where Leela Wa took off from, if you recall, the, um, the airport scene. I went out to uh, the airport. Again, that was just a slideshow. And you might wonder, why don't I take a video camera and why don't I just make movies like everyone else? Why do I go slideshow? Well, it's partly that I fancy myself into still photography. So lots of the time I'm showing you my pictures and it's just a way of kind of archiving my own pictures. Uh, what if Flickr went down? At least I'd have a few YouTubes or something. I'm sharing pictures I'm proud of or I'm glad I took or whatever. And I'm not much of a camera guy. Like, I don't have the equipment. I've used one. I took a camera to meet Magnus Weninger that time that David Kosky and I went to to visit him. And I have some clips, I think, but, you know, I, was, uh, I took more pictures, took a lot of film there, digital. And I need to get some of that re recovered or uploaded or something. So what I'm doing now is frightening myself that I'm not running the camera, but I am. That was a different Camtasia. Let me get right to it here. The calculator of tomorrow is, in other words, something more than a scientific calculator. It's like Codesters or Spider that I'm showing you here, or some other computing surface like we use to write programs, like developers use, right? So like Silicon Valley kind of desktop, Silicon Forest, whatever. A computer, a laptop. It's got the Bash shell, most likely. It can talk to the internet, most likely. When we said one laptop per child, OLPC, that's what we were talking about. It was not one calculator per child, right? That wasn't considered charity uh, that we wanted to do. So if I go, if I run this code on the left, you'll see I have a couple of Python generators. And they just look just like functions, right? They've got the def keyword and the name of the function which you you make up and provide and then a mouth you could call it for arguments what it eats if anything and you know eating is an important interface it's the api that you know as as kind of poets we would always if you ask what's an api it's like something eating something or because it's what you take in really and do you spit it out you know if you drink the wrong fluid your body will just spit it out right but this is good coffee. So let's go ahead and run this generator and I'll show you how it's different from a function. It doesn't just give back a value and, and close up its tent, which is what a function does. A function runs the code and then it's done with it. It's like ready for the next input. Whereas a generator can just go around and around in a circle and never stop but you have to ask it each time for the next thing. So there's not a blocking on an infinite loop happening. You're going, hey, I want to cube -oc the object. And in a function, when you call it like this, you are asking it to execute now top to bottom. Just do your thing and be done with it and give me the result. But when it's a generator with the keyword yield, that's not what you're asking for. You're asking for a special kind of object now called a generator. So its type is going to be generator. And we can confirm that by feeding it to type. And it comes back and it says, hey, I'm a generator, not a function. 
So I'm going to behave differently. And in fact, when you tell me to do next, do the next thing generator, it's what its job is now is just to run to the keyword yield, yield whatever's there, if anything, and pause. And by pause, I mean hard pause. And by hard pause, I mean give control back to the caller. So I can save this first value or not. I can just print it. I can have an echo to the screen. I'll call it save, show it's a variable, and take a look. So it comes back with one. But now I can keep re-executing that statement. Save again, save again. So I'm going ahead a few times. And now when I look at save, it is going to be 162. So let's start over with gen equals cuboctahedral. This reinitializes it. Cuboctahedral gen. It generates the cuboctahedral numbers, where to go in the dictionary or encyclopedia of integer sequences is here. We go to like any kind of web browser and put that in. And we're there, boom, and you can read about it, right? There's the sequence we're generating. So I, I recommend a synergy between, you know, when you have time that you want to work out, it's just work, right? When you want to work on learning some of these generators, go to this uh, source, not just this page, I mean, but any one of these sequences. As you come across them, as they become relevant to you, and most computer science already does this. In fact, they pretty much all do it by showing you the Fibonacci numbers. But don't stop at the Fibonacci numbers. We also have a generator for Pascal's triangle, which I could show you next, or you could find it. Okay, so now that we have a new generator, let's do a quick list comprehension. Next gen for gen in, not for, for excuse me, for, we don't need an argument here. For whatever in range 100. So I'm asking for the first 100, let's get 50, the first 50 of the sequence. So when I hit enter now, there's my list. And you can take this and compare it if you like. There's a lot more we could say about the sequence. It's the number of balls in the shell. And I don't even think I have that particular shell up and running here. But let's just pretend I do. Stem. Looking down, maybe, how about there? I'm pretty good at searching, so I think that the animated GIF I'm talking about, there it is, so. All right, so there we go, that's a sequence. How many balls in each layer? 12, 42, 92, 162, that's the sequence. <clears throat> that's what we're looking at. So this is the calculator of tomorrow. Sometimes I jumped around and looked at my friend's stuff from Nepal. You can go look at Facebook if you need to, share your stuff. You're, you're still working though. So let's test. Let's test. Um, does yield work in coasters? No criticism is if it doesn't. Just wondering. So I'm going to do the simple, really simple generator. I'm going to define generator to just be a while loop, while true, and it's going to yield the number one. And you could say that is the stupidest generator I ever saw. And yes, that's kind of my point. Just not trying to do anything. Just trying to see if it works to do this. And so now that's, see, nothing happened. Even if it doesn't know generators, this is just writing text. This is just, it doesn't know even if it, this is valid Python yet at all. So it's only when you hit the green arrow will this system start to resist. Some IDEs, they'll start fighting back even before Python runs your code, but this one's pretty liberal on that regard. So I just hit the green arrow. I don't see any bugs, but do I see any output? Did I ask for any output? Not actually. Okay, so let's change this to print next G, save it and run it, and print out. And there's a one. Okay, so it looks to me like the yield has been implemented. If it was not at some point, it is now. Could this be true? So let's do this here. Okay, hey, looks like good job. Good job, Coasters. Maybe that was always there. Because I only claim to have found sound recently. Was sound always there? So 
who knows? Maybe I'm just slow. On the other hand, you gotta de you gotta develop. Some things come before others, so maybe I don't misremember. Very good, everyone. That's what it's like to be in the school of tomorrow. It's that simple. You've learned a little about Python generators. Last thing I'll show you though about that is when I run that whole code top to bottom. It creates two generators. The second one is the running total of how many balls this is. And then it'll make a table of those numbers and it will return what's called a pandas data frame, which is like kind of an advanced type of object, but also the kind that you find practical right away. So I don't slog through all of Python and then finally at the end we have our pandas. No, we start with pandas but we also learn generators together, right? So we're gonna make table uh, let's go 300 whatever and say run this. Let's hope this works. I haven't dusted off this code in a while. Um, where did that print come from? Or is that always there? That was there from before. Okay, so if there's a table, it was it was returned to nothing. I didn't save it, so there's a problem. So let's do this again. Save it as D, run it again. And now let's hope we have a global D available. Yep, it's starting to stay, say stuff. So we can do things like D head and just see part of it. And it's not super pretty. If this were Jupyter Notebooks, which is another part of our calculator of tomorrow, then you could start to see some HTML of this. When you moused over different rows, they would light up a little more and stuff like that. So I'm I'm showing off Jupyter Notebook in other no, in other YouTube's uh, on on my channel, but on other channels you'll find it everywhere. Jupyter Notebooks, Calculator of Tomorrow, School of Tomorrow. And we'll see you soon.